Episode 13 of the 2015 Big Footy Blues podcast. I'm your caretaker host, ODM, and we're lifting the spirits and improving the effort around here. Joining me tonight, a former spearhead with a deadly scoring action. He's soon to take on the role of mentoring a young recruit. Hi there, Shandog. <laughs> G'day, how you doing? Good, mate. After a little while playing as a loose man, he suddenly attracted a hard tag, and now he has to learn how to find space by losing, losing his opponent in traffic. It's HBF. <laughs> Evening, everyone. Very good. Very good. <laughs> She's committed to follow her man everywhere, but if a turnover comes, there is nobody better on the counterattack. Please welcome Mebby. <laughs> oh, my God. You're so dead for that. And I would like to make clear that I'm more your kerno type tagger than crap. Tagger than Crowley, thank you very much. <laughs> no pinching it here. Uh, folks, look, let's, let's launch straight into the weekend wake. This is the weekend wake. So last Friday night at the SCG, Carlton 9862 went down to Sydney 198122. Goals for Carlton, Caswalt 2, Everett 2, Jones, Wood, Cripps, Buckley and Tui singles. Best for Carlton, Cripps, Doherty, Simpson, Bell, Kerno and Carrazzo. Guys, uh, it was caretaker coach John Barker's first night in the job. He had basically 20 minutes, uh, I guess, during the week after that um, uh, the, the day that uh, Mick got sacked, um, and he's he's called for a couple of things, uh, accountability, namely tackling pressure and so forth. How do we think the guys went under Barker for the first night, given that he had such a small lead in time? I think you've got to think it was pretty impressive, really, I suppose. One thing we were all yelling out for was that was more effort, and that's what we saw, so you've got to be happy with that at least. I think the general mood in the board was pretty was pretty good after the game. I mean, people weren't jumping up and down screaming about losing by 10 goals so that's a plus i guess <laughs> <laughs> well yeah how, how's that um people satisfied with a 10 goal loss yeah. uh, we, were, we were ridiculed a little bit for that on the uh it was on the main boards of big footy but um i guess uh, given that um you know we had judd gibbs and murphy out um that was you know we expected and we'd been losing by 12 13 goals previous weeks and we we're up against a stronger opposition on their own dunghill um, we it's were a ten goal turnaround, really, isn't it? We were expecting a twenty goal loss, weren't we? So that's probably why we we're satisfied. <laughs> um, were you happy with anybody in particular? Oh, look, I was pretty happy with the way Cripps played. Oh, I think of course we, we were. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> uh, look, if we if if the footy world hadn't already seen it, I, I think on a on the Friday night stage, he, he really stood up in the absence of the players that you've just mentioned, ODN, uh, and did did really well. Like, you know, you couldn't be any more pleased with the way he's developing this year, and and hopefully when we do get a couple of our better midfielders back, you know, um, you know, Cripps can even stand even a little bit taller if that's possible. So, uh, and the other one, I, the other player I was really happy with was Rowe. I know, I know, Buddy kicked a couple on him, but the ones that he did kick, you know, I don't think uh, you know Silvani would have done any better. Uh, his, his, his effort on uh, sorry, his effort on, on Franklin was was first class. I thought. What do we think about White starting on Buddy? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't I can't really see how we would have done anything different. You know, like who else would we have gone in to the game with? Considering that you know Jamison was unavailable, um, we we tried. Yeah, I suppose we could have put Henderson down back at the start, but. Well, yeah. well, I mean, look, he didn't do a lot up forward, so you'd think that uh, people are starting to really realise now that down back is probably his best position. Yeah. Mm. Um, so it is interesting, but uh, I think uh, Rowe said that him and between him and Whitey, they worked out who was going to start on who while they were out on the ground. So there was no preconceived plan. It was sort of uh, up to you guys mm. who wants to go to who. So very interesting. I don't know yeah. how to feel about that. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, tackles this week, 65. Much uh, better. <laughs> oh, that's delicious. So the problem is to me, the reason I'm keeping quiet for once in my goddamn life is because um, I actually fell asleep at half time. So I missed all the good stuff. I woke up the next day and apparently everyone tackled everyone and Dilbuck's kicked a really nice goal. But I'm glad to hear that it was 65 tackles. That's delightful. Yes. Dilbuck's goal was nice. It was like uh, one of those ROK, is it ROK memes? He just came in out of nowhere looking on the, on the TV. What? What the f*** is R.O.K.? He's oh, a... I got you to swear! <laughs> yes! <laughs> um, what on um, earth is, is R.O.K.? <laughs> is that wrestler guy, isn't he? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a thing on the interwebs. But anyway, yeah. It's out, of, out of nowhere, Dilbucks comes screaming into the shot in the goal square, soccer's through the goal. It's quite good to see, actually. We really need that spark. So I really hope he hangs around. It doesn't... Uh, you know, they don't drop him. I really liked Everett's last quarter as well. I think he kicked... Two or two or three, maybe off, off the top of my head. So, I thought he uh, he sort of stood up in that last quarter as well, and, and hopefully that can maybe re kick start his season as well. He's been one of the players that's been down, so I thought he he played pretty well on on Friday night. Yeah, he's been lacking a little bit of urgency, intensity around the ground. Uh, he's probably yeah. been one of the one of the worst culprits, really, considering the year he had last year. Um, so yeah, he seemed to actually really want the ball when he went up forward. So maybe there's a little hint for for Barks that uh, that's where Everett wants to play. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, do we tri- do we attribute the uh, the increased tackle count purely to uh, just extra effort, or do we think that there was some tweaks to the game plan that enabled them to be? Uh, I guess we've been playing a, a sort of a defensive one-on-one game plan um, the rest of the year, Did, uh, and it just seemed to me that we were partly one-on-one, partly a bit of a zone defence that probably allows us to make a bit more more tackles. Did anyone else see that? Probably yep. A bit of both. Like normally, you can, you can see when um, a coach gets sacked, the next week the intensity generally does lift. So that's probably got quite a bit to do with it, I would imagine. And they've been embarrassed in the media with 35 tackles splashed on every back page of every newspaper and and on the internet and stuff like that. So that probably had something to do with it. Um, It's a real double-edged sword for me because if the players have lifted lifted their, their intensity because Mick got sacked, um, again, we come back to the tail wagging the dog, and these then these players being coach killers and and whatnot. Um, I, I'm, I am hoping that it is as much to do with the game plan and the roles that they were playing. Um, a little bit of tweaks that they made during the week, rather than just the fact that the players went, "Oh, this is really serious. We need to actually try now." Um, that you know really sort of grinds my gears. You know, we've, we've seen coaches sacked over the years because the players have had these lapses in their concentration levels and their application. So. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping there was a little bit more to it than that, but uh, I guess time will tell the rest of the year because even if we do play well the rest of the year, it's still going to be a sad indictment on these players and their mindset under Mick. Or whether it shows they didn't like the game plan or they didn't really like Mick, even though they were all coming out weekly and saying, Mick's great, we love Mick. Um, I don't know, but I, I guess we'll know in the fullness of time. Um, anybody else? Anybody else stand up? In your mind, I think I think we had a lot of players who just had decent games, you know, which was good to see. Um, yep. I can't really think of anyone who I was a bit disappointed. With. I guess it would have been really good to have Chris Aaron. Um, I think I mentioned this during the game through it as well. About halfway through the game, he hadn't he had no impact at all, um, and it was a bit disappointing. He was something someone that we could have really used to generate a bit more. Um, better ball use through the middle, and, and he just got really well held by whoever was playing on him. But, you know, we had Doherty uh, had a really good game. Uh, Everett, you guys talked about, he had, what was it, 26 touches, which is good. And, um, geez, I'd love to see him play forward too. Um, yeah, generally everyone did well. Even Ed Kerno, um, he was playing on Hanbury, I think it wasn't it? And yes. uh, kept him pretty quiet. So, um, But I guess the thing that is a little bit frustrating for me coming out of this was, that, again, leading disposal getter and, and probably person who had a lot of influence that we don't want to, Andrew Carazzo. Yeah. We need we need these guys to step up and really take his place. Um, now, we, a lot of people on the boards have been calling for a fair go for um, for Nick Graham, and he finally got a full game, um, first full game of the year. Um, probably only about his seventh full game ever, uh, I think, something like that. Um, he had 80% game time. He got 14 possessions. Seven of those were contested um, and seven tackles, I believe. So it's... It was, it was a reasonable game. wasn't an outstanding game. Is that enough to um, 
to persevere with them in the side, given we're likely to get uh, some gun midfielders back this weekend and next. I'd, I'd, I'd play him. Maybe and I went out to the VFL on, on Sunday and there really wasn't anyone there, maybe with the exception of Holman, who I thought could push for senior selection. And, I mean, obviously Judd, Murphy and Gibbs come straight back. But I think Graham just has to play. I mean, there's other players in the team that I think, you know, would be dropped before Graham. I think yeah. Tut would probably really struggle to hold his to hold his spot. And I, I think the club's just got to play the kids from here till um, the end of this season and just see what they can do. Um, I, I think I also put on the board that it might help fast track their development if they if they're told, look, you're not going to be dropped, we're going to play you, and we'll see we'll see how you go for the rest of the year. Yeah, with those new guys, or new guys, <laughs> with um, Jard and Gibbs and uh, or uh, Judd and Murphy looking likely to come back next week, I'd rather see if we had to drop a midfielder, I'd rather see uh, Carazzo have a stint on the sidelines and let um, let Nick Graham play that role because. What 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 what's there to be gained, you know, by by dropping Nick Graham again? Nothing. Yeah, it's, it's pretty gained much. nothing. And look, Yaron, Yaron may not play this week anyway with his ankles, so we yeah. may not have to we may not have to look to drop drop players or mm. you know, yeah. see any number of players. Um, and I'm not sure about Menzel either. So, from my own point of view, I think Nick Graham stays in. Okay, um, we'll move on to Blues news. Uh, nothing really structured in the way of news this week, folks. Just a you know a fair few rumours going around, and I guess the one news, well, a couple of pieces of news that we heard about were the the amount of coaches that are ruling themselves out from a Carlton coaching <laughs> position without actually being asked. <laughs> uh, I, uh, we've had, we've had um, we had Bomber Thompson, John Walsfold, and uh, and Matthew Matthew Nix. Is that Matthew yep. Nix? Yeah, see, I can't even remember who he is. I know he used to play for Sydney some time ago. He's a Port Adelaide assistant coach, apparently. He's ruled himself out as well. Uh, so he actually went to great pains to say uh, he hasn't heard anything. Nobody's co- contacted him, but uh, but uh, he's ruling himself out. So, um, I mean, at least don't wait till we ask the question before you come out and, and uh, <laughs> make it seem like you're rejecting us. I mean, t- to be fair, I mean, I was watching, I was watching Fox Footy when... Mark Thompson was being interviewed, and he was actually he was asked a direct question: "Would you coach Carlton?" And he said no. So um, I'd say thank God. <laughs> yeah. So he was he all he was doing was responding to a question that was asked, and I dare say, Warsfold and Nix were doing exactly the same thing, whether we've approached them or not. Well, I appreciate what you're saying, HPF, uh, in so far as these guys were asked, but what I'm what I'm wondering is there's a lot better candidate, especially amongst the assistant coaches, um, ahead of Matthew Nix. Now, I don't know whether they've been asked. If not, why not? And what have their responses been if they were asked sort of thing? You know, it's like seem, it seems strange that uh, out of all those candidates that Matthew Nix was the one that was, um, that was asked. I, I suppose if you look at it from another angle, were we really, really in the hunt for Warsfold, Thompson and Nix? I mean, I would have thought, We'd probably go after a few more highly credentialed assistants than, than those three. So, I agree. I agree. I agree totally. But uh, I mean, th- if these three have been asked, and that's the only reason they've answered the question, um, what, why aren't the media asking anybody else? And because yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they played it straight back to those questions and said, "Look, yeah. I'm, I'm currently assistant coach at Sydney Swans and uh, or Hawthorne or wherever, um, and um, you know I'll, I'll worry about those things in the fullness of time, kind of thing." Because that gives you an idea that they're not totally ruling it out. Um, so it's just strange that you know the only guys that have asked are ones that never intended to uh, take the job anyway. Knowing Carlton, they've already got. They've had someone stitched up for 18 months. <laughs> and, and our new coach is just hiding in the shadows, biding his time, just whiling away the hours while coach after coach rules themselves out of the race. It's probably John Barker. Uh, yeah, oh, gee, yeah, yeah, <laughs> possibly. Oh, did I go too far with my story? <laughs> Rats, is that you? 
have, have you been there since 2012? Oh, no, because I, I love him so much and I'd be so happy if it would come full circle and he'd come back and take, you know, just I can picture it now, him holding up the cup again. And just, you, you oh, know, you know, we couldn't afford to do it. We, we really couldn't afford to it. We made the mistake in the first place. To get it back would be just compounding our mistake. And if he fails, I know. Oh, even worse. It's so, so for that point, you'd rather fail with a new coach than actually getting somebody mm. back and failing for, for a perceived second time. Although, yeah, it's, uh, it's far too high. But it's like in my little fantasy mind, Eddie Bet still plays for us and Ratton's still our coach. <laughs> 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 Yeah, there's lots of – yeah, I'll leave my fantasy there, but I, – I think we're all in love with the fa- the idea of having a process at Carlton to decide a coach because we've never done it before. Um, so I think most people are in – just just having an interview process and actually sitting sitting back and seeing who has the best PowerPoint skills. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, just sort of getting an insight into their minds. It sounds great. And that, for that reason, we think, hey, a, a, young, a young first-time coach would be really great for us maybe up to you know, a four- or five-year contract because it's going to take time to rebuild so some sort of job security there. However, there's always a spectre of an older coach, on, especially with Carlton, um, sort of around the fringes. And you start looking at, uh, you know, Paul Roos is going to be handing over Melbourne. He's actually done a pretty good job with, from Mel, you know, to get Melbourne from a basket case to where they are and actually become very competitive. And you, you can see all the, all the talent coming through now. He's done a pretty good job with them. He was... Apparently, uh, first choice ahead of Mick, according to some. Uh, maybe um, uh, Mrs. Pratt. Um, she might have might have been her first choice back in two thousand and twelve, but uh, he wasn't available. Mick was. Um, so you kind of you don't want us to do it, but then you know I guess his record and actually and actually sort of gelling the sides and making them unified and getting them to play for each other seems to be pretty good. Yeah, you wouldn't you, scoff at Ruse coming everywhere in Carlton Colours, to be honest. You, would you forego a process for Ruse? I, I think if there, the, the, if there was a process, he'd probably still be one of the top contenders for it, you know. so He wouldn't interview for the job. He'd, be, he'd have to be asked. Asked to interview. I, I, no, I, I, <laughs> I doubt Paul Ruse is interviewing. Yeah, they're exactly right. That, so that's my point. You know, you'd have to forego the process to get somebody like Ruse again. So yeah. interesting. I like Paul Ruse. I've and I've heard him speak and in person, and I've read his book and all that sort of thing. And I like a lot of his philosophies. And I think a lot of the discipline stuff is probably exactly what our club needs. But at the same time, he's a pretty defensive coach as well. And I know that a lot of Carlton people would not be happy if he joined us. I'd be happy personally, but I still think there would be a bit of a ruckus around it if he was our next coach. Um, folks, uh, our Bloomer discussion thread has um, had, a, had a few good entries lately, our, uh, our Bloomer file, um, from uh, resident uh, Bloomer legend uh, Mark Smurf 3. Um, he's, he's come up with a few. Um, one, um, basically saying all coaches but Dean lately will probably be moved on at the end of the year, which is interesting. Um, I didn't know all well, the rest apparently Mick men, so I, I, I didn't know that was the case. I know lately re- apparently didn't want to take on the caretaker coach role, so that's interesting. Um, Jonathan Brown has been talked to as a possible assistant coach candidate for next year. Um, and also that Blocky Henderson reportedly has had two contract offers from other clubs to weigh up once it's stay at Carlton, but the money will be a factor. What do we think about those? I think I think the Henderson one is really the, the one that most interests us right now. The coaching one, I guess we'll see what comes out in the wash with the assistant coaches and Jonathan Brown and whatnot. But but the players, the ones who actually kick that ball around, um, geez, yeah. I'd hate to see Henderson go somewhere else. But you, uh, he's got to show some form before we really start throwing big dollars at him. Like he, he was, he's just been. He's been bad this year, you know. Rumor is about six hundred thousand plus per year they're looking for. I mean, if you if you judge him on current output, which is what everybody else gets judged on, he's not worth it. No. He, now, 
Can't wait. Um, there, there was some confusion. I don't know why, but people for a fair while have been thinking that um, Lockie Henderson was a free agent, maybe because of his years in the game, but it's good. he's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. Killed you, Shannon. And I'm wishing he was now because um, it, uh, if he was getting uh, contract offers over 600000 um Carlton will be looking at a, uh, a first round pick right after our uh, <laughs> our first round pick this year, so um, that would be that would be James Frawley ish uh, esque sort of uh, compensation. So uh, he's not, unfortunately. So we can only look at a trade. Um, so yeah, look, I don't know uh, what is Henderson now. But uh, how old is he? Twenty four, twenty five, twenty five. You know, Carlton. You know, got a few years of rebuilding to come before. But, you know, before we're going to get anywhere, he may he'll be he'll be in his late twenties. Is he going to have an impact as a top, as a key position player? Then he start he start looking at all these factors of whether somebody's going to perform and earn their pay packet over that time. Mind you, we don't, we won't have many players left who are actually worthy of a pay rise, and we're going to have a lot of room in our salary cap. Maybe we've got to use it up on somebody. So it'll be interesting which way we go. But uh, so. But, we sort of brushed brushed over that uh, Jonathan Brown thing. Do you guys would you guys want him as an assistant coach? I love Jonathan Brown. Yeah, I can't see any harm in having him there. Um, yeah. You know, probably only good things really. He's been he's been quite uh, quite vocal, sort of pointing out some of our uh, areas of concern uh, on the couch. Obviously, um, he's had a bit of a look at us uh, at us. So um, I don't mind that he's been critical because there's plenty there to be critical about at the moment. So um, yeah. Exciting times ahead, maybe. Pre-game pep talk. So on Saturday, 1.40 p.m. at the MCG, Carlton take on the Adelaide Crows. Carlton have won four of the last five encounters against the Crows. Uh, but it's fair to say our fortunes are looking decidedly worse this year as we uh, anchor to the bottom of the ladder while they're sitting in seventh position. Um, who are we looking at as far as uh, possible ins and outs this week? Looking through the preview thread, there's about 15,000 different um, uh, calls for this person and that person to come in and out. It, it's tough at the moment. I wouldn't want to be on the, the selection committee at the moment because there's so many bad choices to make. Um, you know, the choice between um, uh, Jones or Watson, uh, for instance. So, yeah, look, it's it's going to be tough. I, I'm disappointed, it looks like, from the um, injury update that we got during the week that Jamison's not going to be able to get up, and I think we really needed him. If we wanted to have a chance at winning this game, we needed yeah. him to be playing because the Crows generally play with those three tools, you know, uh, Walker, Lynch, and Jenkins. Jenkins. Yeah, so that's going to be really, really hard to cover. That means, I mean, if we, if we have Rowe and White and Henderson down there, one of them's going to be undersized. So, mm. yeah, going to be tough, but um, look, I... I'd just like to see us to continue to give games to, like like we talked about earlier, to Nick Graham, um, favour the younger ones over guys who aren't going to be around in three or four years. Um, and uh, I'd, I'd like to see us shake up the forward structure that we're, we're playing with at the moment. I'd be happy to see Casbolt there and, and just get some other guys around him, like Walker, our Walker, <laughs> And, and Everett, get them playing forward, like mobile guys who can take marks, decent kicks, even though, if they're, even though they're not 198 centimetres tall, you know, they're still a good size. I, I think we should be looking at a forward line like that, to be honest. Yeah, no, fair call. Um, I see Menzel and Yaron are still listed as tests this week, so their injuries is one of the, maybe a couple of niggly ones, so they, they may still get up, and I heard Andrew McKay say as much, but uh, that probably means they're out for three or four. <laughs> um, so... Um, and obviously, Judd and Murphy are listed as test. And we've also got um, uh, one week away, um, Jamison, Gibbs and Byrne. Um, be, it, we'll take on a different look, you know, getting somebody... Um, Kerry Byrne's a, a quality youngster. We saw that from the one quarter he did play. And, um, and uh, he's, he's a competitive beast as well. So... Uh, oh, don't say up. that. <laughs> you jinx him. Isn't Liam Jones a competitive beast? Yeah, that's the problem. Know, you never heard those words from my mouth, maybe. That would have been a, a, a Mick. That was a Mick thing, wasn't it? Wow. Yeah. He's gone now. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, we haven't really spoke about um, Matthew Cruz. Has got to be a massive chance to return this week. Yeah, that's the other one. What do we do about the rucks? If because if Cruz is good to go, you've got to bring so him. Good to see him on the weekend. Yeah. I'll, I'll look, I suggested that Cruz is obviously a number one ruck, and you know, um, I've had people say and, uh, that um, you've got to leave Wood in just until Cruz has actually settled back into the side properly because he is such a, a bit of an unknown at that senior level at the moment. Um, so, you know, it looks like we potentially go in with Cruiser, Casbolt and um, Wood. And Wood's been in, in reasonable form most weeks. And, uh, again, um, he's, he's very he's very competitive and does actually um, give a yelp and does show some passion out there. So um, I would imagine I would like to see Cruiser in the ruck. I think he, he's ruined as a forward, but I can see us playing him a fair bit up forward this week. And, and un, un, I guess unlike when... Cruises in the side with Warnock, and Warnock can't play anywhere but Ruck. Um, you can put Cruiser in the Ruck and rest Wood up forward uh, because he is capable of taking a mark and kicking a goal now and again. So that might be your answer if Jones does miss because his form last week was... Uh, it, look, his effort was OK in part, but he just can't get near the ball, and um, he's, he's not doing anything that he's paid to do as a forward. Um, so if he does, if he does go out and they're not going to bring Watson straight back in because he had a game and he was out again. Um, it, you, you, they might look at uh, Cruiser and Wood being that uh, second forward along with um, uh, when they're resting, along with Levi. HBF, what did you think of him on the weekend? Because I thought he, Cruiser was moving really well and it, it didn't look like he was nervous on the wet ground or anything to me. I, I agree. I, I thought he moved around the ground particularly well for someone who's been out of the game you know, for so long. Uh, I think he played, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he played to about midway through the final quarter. Yeah, um, then, he, right, yeah. then he sort of finished for the day. So I, I don't think he would uh, have any problems at all coming back this week, especially at the MCG. I, I think perhaps it, had the game been at Eddie, had that may have been a factor for him. But uh, it's been quite wet in Melbourne as well, so the ground should be reasonably soft. So I, I don't, I don't have an issue with him coming in at all. Whether the club want to play him predominantly as a forward and use maybe Wood in the ruck and Cruiser to relieve him, or they could go the other way and, and he just comes straight in as number one ruck. What yeah. we do with Wood then, I don't know, but I don't think he'd have any issue running out a full game um, on Saturday afternoon at the G. Cruiser looked to have bulked up a little bit to you? No, I thought he'd actually slim down a bit, to be honest. Oh, I see. It might have been just the, the TV coverage. That <laughs> televised VFL match on the weekend, but um, or a stream, um, and uh, he, he looked to me like he, well, he was, he was, he was, he looked to be in pretty. Uh, He's good, in good shape. Like, good, yeah. good shape. He looked. He's sort of just dwarfing everybody around him, size wise, physique wise. He's definitely in good shape, but there were some guys on the Box Hill Hawks side that were like big fellas that. Yeah. Cruiser didn't look particularly big next to them, but he's. De- I reckon he's definitely slimmed down. Um, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but he was looking pretty bulky. He's slimmed down a lot, so maybe that's why he's got a bit more freedom around the ground. He's a bit more agile, but he looks good. I'm just a little bit more conservative than most, and I think with the bye the following week, it wouldn't kill us to leave him out this week, but I can understand he's probably chomping at the bit to get out there. Mm. I suppose the other thing, perhaps, that we can consider is the Northern Blues actually play on Monday. So that wouldn't give him two weeks off. I don't think, I can't remember when we play Port. So maybe they, they, maybe they play him Saturday as more of a forward, give him a couple of weeks off, let his body recover, and then get him into the second half of the year. Um, okay, uh, the million dollar question, uh, well, more like half a million dollar question. Um, who do we play on Eddie Betts? Me. <laughs> now she's going the hard tag again. Tightest oh. tag ever. <laughs> I'm taking off his back like a spider monkey. <laughs> um, well, obviously, if Chris Yaron is, is is in doubt. He might be on it before, and Eddie's actually embarrassed Chris Yaron a couple of times. The last time they did play on each other, but. Um, I don't know if if, if Yaron's out, um, would they go with Dylan Buckley or would they go with Sam Doherty? Uh, uh, it's an interesting little conundrum, that one, because um, nobody's really going to stop him. It's just how much you can sort of limit him. Yeah, I reckon we might see a few different players on him at different stages. Perhaps even two, he might go on him at some point as well. Yeah, well, he'll, he'll do them for pace big time. So, yeah, interesting. 
Yeah. Uh, I thought I thought Sam Doherty actually. He, yeah. He's probably been uh, he's probably been our most consistent player for the year actually. So that, well, I think to give Doherty a, a test on probably the best small forward in the game. What, yeah. Why not? I mean, we got we got nothing else to lose. I mean, two he's played on bets before and has been pants by him really. So. Why yeah. not give uh, Why not give Doc a go? See how, see how he goes. He's the best reader of the play, and he and he's and he's he's got good hands. He's good in the air as well as Eddie is. So um, it's uh, maybe maybe you're right. Maybe that's the way to go. And, and Doc, he's not really going to be sort of um, shoved out of a contest too easy. He's, see, he's, he's, yeah, that's kind of why I want someone else to play on him, though, for those exact reasons you said, Odian. He's such a good um, defender in his own right that works off his. Yep. Man, to take those intercept marks and then deliver the ball, you know, up the ground is that I don't, I don't want him just chasing Eddie Betts' ass around. Um, I'd rather him be in a more proactive role. Yeah, I, but I also don't want Dylan Buckley to play on him because I think Dylan's better just outside the forward fifty arc and actually setting up play through the corridor. Um, you know, finding those runners um, going forward because he always he's he's always looking to attack, and I don't want him negated being being taken back into a pocket by Eddie either. So yeah. I think he'll be exposed. So uh, it, it, it's it's going to be. It's going to be a problem, and it's really going to come down to the midfield work rate and how they stop those balls coming in. Mm. So, um, all right. Uh, do we want to make any predictions, folks, or are we just going to predict uh, uh, more improvement over last week? I've actually got a good feeling about this week. I'm going to say, I, I don't think we'll win, but I'll say the Crows by 25 points. Oh, no, I'm going to say we're going to win. I reckon we're going to win. It's about time we turn it around. We've got a good record against the Crows. We've got some. Handy ins coming in. Um, yeah, Carlton by uh, five points. I don't like to tip against us, so I'm not going to tip. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, but you think the former Carlton players will go well? <laughs> I, think, I think Eddie's going to have a great day out and he's going to find me in the crowd and he'll uh, he'll point point at me in the Eddie Betts pocket. Well, I hope you <laughs> I hope he's not looking for you after half time, maybe. Shh, tell anyone. <laughs> I'm leaving at half time. I can only see the first half. So if he's going to kick a bag, can you do them all in quarters one and two, please, Eddie? You're going to miss our big comeback, though. Oh, let's be honest, I'm not. <laughs> 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 Look, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just hoping for a competitive effort. I think, I think as the players start to come back in with a newfound, a little bit of freshness around the place. I think we will we'll see a better effort. Um, you know, um, last week was good. This week will be better. The, the opposition is slightly lesser. Um, you know, we're at we're at home. Uh, we have a good record against them. We're still missing a couple of players. You know, Jamison gives back. I'd almost tip us, um, but um, you know, I, I, we may Adelaide are pretty battle hardened at the moment. I think we may still fall short, but. I am so looking forward. I'm just I'm watching this game purely because to see uh, Matthew Caruso go around. It's been a long time coming. What did he play one game last year, uh, and it was sort of out by the middle of the year, uh, the year before. So it's been he's played one game in two years. Um, I'm just so thrilled to see the big guy back, and you know, no further setbacks. Uh, touch wood. So um, yeah, um, anything else you guys want to discuss before we wrap it up? Nothing for me. Nope. All right. I think we'll leave it there. Thanks, folks. Um, thank you very much, HBN, for coming in. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Shandog. <laughs> Good night, everyone. And thank you, Mrs. Eddie Be- uh, Mevy. See you, peeps. Go, Eddie <laughs> and Carlton, everybody. I, l- I love them all equally. <laughs> all <right>. <laughs> <laughs> I- I'm glad you stuck out the full podcast and didn't leave halfway through. <laughs> 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. Hey, sorrow, won't you be mine?